This video will cover the difference between how probabilities are computed for discrete and continuous random variables, how to compute probability values for a continuous uniform probability distribution, and how to compute the expected value and variance for a continuous uniform probability distribution. The discrete uniform and binomial probability distributions have been covered in Chapter 5. We will be taking a look at the uniform probability distribution in this video, which is a continuous probability distribution. Let's take a look at the difference between discrete probability distributions and continuous probability distributions. In the case of the discrete probability distribution, the probability mass function f of x provides the probability that the random variable assumes a particular value of x. f of x lies between 0 and 1 for all x values that have been observed, and x can only take on specific values. The values of f of x all sum to 1 for all x that have been observed. Take for example, let x be the number of drops from a tap. These number of drops can take on a specific value. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to, posi to positive infinity. If we look at continuous probability distributions, the probability density function f of x does not directly provide any probabilities. However, f of x is a positive function for all x, and those x values can take any possible value between negative infinity and positive infinity. In the case of continuous probability distributions, the area under the probability density function fx for values of x equals 1. The area under the probability density function is equivalent to the probability of the defined random variable x. So if we find the total area under the probability density function over all possible values of x in the defined interval, then we are finding the total probability for all possible values of x, which is equal to 1. It can be seen that this condition is similar to that of the discrete probability distribution, where in that case, we take the sum of all the probabilities for all the specified values of x, which is also equal to 1. In addition, for any continuous probability distribution, the probability of observing an exact value from the interval of the random variable defined is 0. Take an example where x is the volume of water flowing from a tap. Now, it's impossible to count the number of drops. However, it's possible to measure the volume of the water. Let's consider the discrete uniform probability distribution versus the continuous uniform probability distribution. In the case of the discrete uniform, the probability mass function f of x in this example is a constant value of 1 over 4, and the x values that can be observed are 1, 2, 3, and 4. We are able to assign a probability to each value using f of x, which in this case happens to be 0.25. It is fixed since it's a discrete uniform and the probabilities are all equal. It's possible to sketch a graph that also indicates the probabilities and this can be seen that the probabilities are only allocated to the values observed of 1, 2, 3 and 4. For the continuous probability distribution, the probability density function is also a constant and it's defined for x values within an interval 
where a lower boundary n and upper boundary are provided. And in this example, the lower boundary is 120 and the upper boundary is 140. For any other x values, the probability function is zero. It can be take, noted that there is a difference in the values of x observed for the discrete uniform, in which case for the discrete uniform only specific values are considered. However, for the continuous uniform, the x values fall within an interval. Therefore, an infinite number of x values can be observed. It's not possible to draw a table of probability distributions for each x value since there are an infinite number that can be observed in the interval. However, a graph of the probability density function values versus the x values can be drawn as illustrated in this figure. It resembles a geometric shape whose length is the interval of possible x values. And in this case, the length goes from 120 to 140 on this x axis. And the height is the value of the probability density function f of x on the y axis. And in this case, the height is 1 over 20 as indicated. The term uniform is synonymous with other words such as alike, similar, equal, even, and unchanging. There are many examples where this term can be used, such as the application of uniform distributed punching load, as well as all colors are evenly distributed and uniform throughout the screen. In addition, it was initially assumed that each spot on a plane was just as likely to be hit as any other and that they would see a uniform distribution of bullet holes. Let's take a look at some examples. Consider the random variable x representing the arrival time of a train at a London underground station. Suppose the arrival time is 0800, then it can arrive any time in the interval from 0 to 10 seconds after 8. Another example would be, assume that a bus is scheduled to arrive at a bus stop between 8 a.m. and 8.10 a.m. Consider the random variable x representing the time in minutes between 8 a.m. and the bus arriving. Let's look at the following assumptions. In the example of the train, the probability of arrival time within any one second interval is the same as the probability of an arrival time within any other one second interval. We can say that the arrival time is uniformly distributed between 0 and 10 seconds. In the case of the bus, the probability that the bus arrives between 8 and 8 or 2 a.m. is equal to the probability the bus arrives between 8 or 6 and 8 or 8. We say that the arrival time is uniformly distributed between 0 and 10 minutes. In this case, each outcome is equally likely over a continuous range. And therefore, the probability density function f of x is defined as 1 over b minus a for all values of x between a and b. And this probability density function is 0 for elsewhere, or rather for other values of x observed. a happens to be the lower, interval, the lower boundary of the interval, and b is the upper boundary of the interval.